we'll let these others come in. Okay, so the meeting is recording. We've got a few more people entering. So I'm going to start the meeting. So to let everybody know who's just arrived, uh, this meeting is going to be recorded today. Uh, we're going to ask uh, residents and members if you could uh, turn your cameras and microphones off, please, uh, so that our British Sign Language interpreter can be front and centre for people who require that service. I want to welcome everybody to this second meeting today to discuss the outbreak of the South African variant of COVID-19 in the Frankie Great Park Ward. My name is Councillor Simon Morrell, and as the Ward Councillor for Frankie Great Park Ward, uh, it falls on my responsibility uh, to chair this meeting tonight, which is open to all members of the public across the region and host the councillors from neighbouring uh, wards. Uh, joining us today, uh, we've got Dr Justin Varney, who is the Director of Public Health on Birmingham City Council. Uh, Councillor Paulette Hamilton, who is the Labour Cabinet Member for Health and Social Care on Birmingham City Council. Uh, we also have Gary Sambrook, the Member of Parliament for Birmingham Northfield, uh, and Councillor Adrian Delaney, who is the Councillor for Ruby and Redner Ward. Councillor Debbie Clancy from Longridge and West Eve, and Councillor Eddie Freeman from Adams Cross. Uh, we're hoping to be joined by other councillors uh, from across the Northfield uh, ward. Uh, I think it, it is important uh, as a Northfield family that uh, everybody is briefed on what we've done here, and frankly, because obviously uh, this could happen elsewhere. And obviously we want to ensure the, the safety of, of everybody across our constituency. Um, this is a cross party effort. Uh, this is not a political forum. Uh, this is not a, a, an episode of Question time. Uh, we have a Labour run council, a Conservative government, and a parish council in Frankly that is non political. Uh, so we politely ask people uh, to leave your politics at the door like we are. When we open up to questions, if you could keep your questions uh, constructive and pragmatic about the issue um, at hand, because we, we do want to get round to everybody. And what I'm going to do this time around at this meeting, because it is a follow up meeting, is uh, when Dr. Varney has spoken. Um, I'm going to open up to councillors first, and then I'm going to open up to uh, to members of the public. We might have a parish council in Frankly, but not anybody from the parish council is actually on the meeting. Uh, oh, you're still on the parish, aren't you, Marion? No, you're not. Oh, okay. No. Well, so uh, so well, we do. Uh, the, the meeting is recorded, so the parish obviously can 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 watch the recording afterwards. So before I open up to Councillor Hamilton, uh, who's our cabinet member, I just want to start by saying, uh, as the operation has come to a, 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 a drawn to a close this week, uh, how incredibly proud I am of people in Frankly. Um, when this outbreak first started, uh, somebody made a derogatory comment on social media by saying that the virus needs to be more scared of people in Frankly. And uh, as your councillor, I can stand here and say, Actually, yeah, they should have been scared of people in Frankly because the people in Frankly have absolutely kicked 10 bells out of this virus in the last two weeks. To give you a perspective of what's happened over the last two weeks, on the very first day when this was announced, uh, the Longridge testing sites at St Modwins ran out of test kits on the very first day. On Friday, uh, we opened up the Hollymore uh, Collect and Drop Centre where thousands were being collected. On the Saturday, we opened up at the cinema and the following week, uh, we opened up door to door testing. Uh, the feedback I've got from residents has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, people have been uh, have said that everything's run very efficiently. And by the following Saturday, which was the 13th, we had achieved 10,000 tests. Now, to those who are counting from the day it started, that was the 10th day of the operation. So we, we achieved 10,000 tests in 10 days. That is ridiculous. And no one party, I think, can take any credit for that. Not me, not the government, not the council, other than the people of Frankly themselves for stepping up to the plate and doing their duty, which is exactly what I said that the people of this community would do. And I can't tell you how incredibly proud I am of everybody for doing that. Now, um, we knew that information on Saturday. We didn't say anything at the time because we didn't want to lose momentum. We wanted people to continue to go out there and get tests. And as you would have seen from the report I put out on social media yesterday, uh, there's only been a 2.1% rise across Frankly Great Park this past week. That's despite all of the mass testing. 
Uh, we do expect that to plummet uh, with the next report. However, I want to advise residents that doesn't mean that you're entitled now to all go out and have a rave. Uh, you do need to still continue the government guidelines of hand, face, space, and uh, and please check up on your neighbours and, and all of your loved ones. The bit of the jigsaw that we're all here, obviously, to talk about today, which I'm hoping Dr Varney will shed some light on, is the SA, the, the South African variant itself. Uh, for those who know, it takes seven to ten days to verify if, uh, if, if a positive test has the variant because it goes to a separate lab. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, we, Dr Varney will be able to shed some light on that today. But before I, I, I hand over to Councillor Hamilton, once again, I just want to say a, a huge thank you and congratulations uh, for that 10,000 test target being reached within 10 days. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Councillor Hamilton. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Simon, um, Councillor Morrill. I, I'm not going to keep you um, for a long period of time. I, it's two minutes. Basically, I just want to thank you all. I have seen communities come together quickly in the past, but the way that Franklin Northfield have come together and worked together has been phenomenal. It's actually a blueprint for what we then do if this happens in other parts of Birmingham. And they've, they've watched what we've done in Birmingham in other parts of the country. It has been a really massive success. Not just the drop and collect, not just people collecting the tests, not just it, the whole thing has been a massive success. So what I wanted to do tonight is just Thank you all for pulling together, coming together as a community and actually making this work. That's the first thing. Secondly, this variant, Justin will talk about it in a little while, but this variant came to cause, it came into our communities to cause problems. But what our community has shown is they're following the rules, they're doing what they're told, they're keeping their social distancing, they're washing their hands, they're wearing their masks. And I think the outcomes have happened because of how this community has worked together. The politicians have been phenomenal. They have come together and they have absolutely shown what true leadership is. But can I also give a special thank you to public health and other parts of the council that again have come together and ensured that we have delivered a successful piece of work. I'm going to shut up now, but two things that I always say, then I will not say another word. If you get asked to go and um, get your, your test, your, your vaccine, please, please, please do not forget or do not refuse to take your vaccine. It is imperative if we are going to find a way out of this that people continue to take their, the, the, they take the vaccine when it's offered. And finally, I am obsessed about the community champions, the COVID champions. If anybody is prepared to become a COVID champion, we'll ensure we give you the link for that. Please, please, please become a COVID champion because this is how we pass the information on to people in our local community. And at that point, I'm going to hand back to Simon and just say thank you to all the councillors, but especially a big thank you to the residents that without you, this could not have happened. Thank you. Simon, over to you. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. And also, I just want to commend you as well for the work that you're doing with the vaccine. Uh, information strategy in, in Birmingham. I think that does need to be recognised. Um, right, so I've, I've, I've just opened the meeting with loads of positives. Uh, I'm now going to hand over to Dr Varney, who I hope is not going to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, is Dr Varney, um, is he present? Yes, I am, Councillor Morrell. Um, I just want to check, if I share slides, um, will that displace Kelly from people's screens? I think it might actually. I think it does, uh, yeah. Justin. Yeah, I thought it does. So I, I won't share slides, but we have got a set that can be sent round uh, yes, afterwards. If you spotlight me, if the presenter spotlights me, it will show me and the presentation. OK, thanks, Kelly. I will do that for you. And Jean, could you just turn your camera off, please? Yeah. 
Brilliant. Thank right. you. Over to Dr. Varney then. Let's uh, let's try this and see. You can see we're all still learning to uh, to use this. So if you can let me know if you can see the slides and Kelly. Uh, Kelly's on the screen, but not your slides, Justin. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's um, let's. I'll I'll do it without slides then. Um, let's not complicate things. We can things. see it now, Doctor. <laughs> oh, so it's um right. Can you still see it? Yeah, yes, I see that. yes. Okay, fine. So um where we are at the moment across the city is we're seeing case rates coming down. And I wanted to start by giving a bit of that context for you. So over the, the last week up to the 13th of February, we'd seen a, just under a 30% drop in case rates. Um, and we'd also seen about a 30% drop in case rates in our over 60s. And we do a random sample of genetic testing of positive cases. That's done nationally. And that shows that about 98.7% of new cases in Birmingham are the new Kent variant. Um, so that's the, the kind of current picture. And when we look at the pattern and what's happened during the national lockdown is we've seen case rates really rapidly coming down. And we're now back to where we were as a city around the middle of October. So we, we've still got a bit of a way to go before we can really start to unlock from lockdown, but it is really positive signs. Now, when we look at the case rates by ward, those of you that get updates as COVID community champions will see that Frankly's currently got the highest case rate in the city. And that is what I expected to see, because as we increase the testing in Frankly, and in Northfield, um, and to some extent in Rubri and Rednall, we would expect to find more cases because lots of people who haven't got symptoms are being tested. And actually, the testing rate in Frankly last week was over 10 times the average for the whole city. So a massive increase in testing, and that has really helped us find cases of COVID in the community. And my hope is that because we found all these people with COVID and they're now isolating and their contacts are isolating, is we will see in about two weeks time, the case rate in Frankly come crashing down. And I hope will be one of the lowest in the city, but we will see how that, that plays out over the next couple of weeks. So on to Operation Eagle. So Operation Eagle, as you remember, was a, a national programme of response to variants of concern. Variants of concern are strains of the virus that are either more infectious, have a higher mortality, so kill more people, or cause problems with the vaccines. Currently, we have variants of concern in South Africa, in Brazil, Japan, and of course the Kent variant in the UK. Operation Eagle is about trying to contain the spread of the South African variant in the UK where we can't link it to travel. So if someone is found to have the South African variant and we know they got off a plane last week, then we don't do all of this extra testing. We're doing it because we can't find the connection between the cases we have in Frankly and South Africa. There are three areas in the West Midlands that have been part of Operation Eagle. So ourselves, Walsall and Worcestershire. The approach for Operation Eagle is to do saturation testing. So we're trying to get as many people to test as possible over a two week period, so we can try and find if there are other cases of the South African variant in the area and whether they are linked to travel or if we have lots of cases and it's already pretty spread. 
The testing is done through the PCR test. So the swab to your nose and your throat that gets sent off to the lab. And they had to be done through the specific testing sites. So they went to a single national laboratory so that any tests that are positive then have a further test to look at the genetic code of the virus. So we could tell, was it normal COVID or South African COVID? And that extra test takes between seven and 10 days. So at the moment, we don't have the results from those extra tests yet. People are told if they're positive from the first test and people have been getting their results uh, within about 24 to, to 48 hours um, after the swab was sent back to the lab. And they get all the normal advice from NHS Test and Trace. If that positive test then turns out to be South African variant, they will then get a second phone call from Public Health England to talk them through what that means. But at the moment, we haven't been told of any further cases. But of course, a lot of the kits have only just got to the lab, so we're still waiting for some of the results. As you know, we focused on a very specific area of the city in frankly Great Park, a bit of Northfield and a couple of houses on the border with Rubri and Rednall. The area we defined was very generous, so we drew quite a big circle around the cases and where they lived. And, that in, and then we had to define that area by postcode. And that meant there were some slightly odd boundaries. That's why the houses in Rubri and Rednall were included and why that little spike to the north of Tassel Lane in Northfield was included. It's because of the postcode rather than any additional risk. We started testing on the 3rd of February and we stopped testing yesterday. We had testing units, the mobile testing units at St Modwin's and the one at the Empire Cinema. We set up the community centre in Hollymore for people to collect kits and drop them back. We had a scheme where businesses and schools could order kits so they get dropped off one day and picked up the next day. And we had a doorstep programme as well. And we aim to offer each house at least two attempts were made to offer testing. So we knocked on every door in the area at least twice. Doesn't mean everyone was in, but we tried to vary it. And this happened over the weekend as well to try and ensure as many people were offered a test as possible. And when the test kits were returned to us, they all went off to the lab. Some people may have posted their kits back they still will have been picked up by the national by the Royal Mail because they know the post boxes in the area. So there was work done to ensure that if people did post them back, they would still be picked up by Operation Eagle. As you know, we did a lot of engagement. We set up the website. We did work on social media. I'm very grateful to the MP and to the councillors who helped facilitate ward forums on the 5th of February when we were just starting, to BCBS who brought together community organisations on the 5th of February as well, and to the BID uh, and to uh, the business groups in, in the area who also came together earlier this week for a specific session with businesses. So we tried to do a lot of engagement and we also ran special sessions for schools in the area as well. We also tried to contact all of the businesses in the area directly as well by email and telephone during the last week to make sure they knew that they could get the kits from us if they wanted to. So there was a lot of work done to try and make sure that everyone had the opportunity to take a test if they wanted to. So this is what I can share at the moment in terms of numbers. Um, and as I said, we're still waiting for some of the numbers to come through because testing finished yesterday. So people who tested yesterday, their results will come through today and tomorrow and they won't go on my database probably until Friday 
or over the weekend. So we don't have the full picture yet. But what I can say is so far, we're just under 12,500 tests have been taken over the last uh, 10, 10 days or so. Um, and we reach that through a combination of the door-to-door -door testing, the collect and drop hub at the Collymore Centre, the work with businesses and schools, and also through the mobile testing units at Longbridge uh, and at Great Park. And across all of that, what I can see is that already we've reached over 50% of the population of Frankly took a test during this period which is brilliant news. So it really is testament to how you guys in the community have responded to this and, and responded to our ask to test. The case rate is higher, as I said, but the testing rate is 10 times higher than the average for the city. So I don't think looking at the numbers that I'm particularly concerned that there's more COVID in Frankly at the moment. I think we've just done a really good job at finding it. And we should find out somewhere over the next 10 days um, whether new cases of the South African variant uh, were found or not. <clears throat> so the next steps are, we'll be giving a formal public report at the Local Outbreak Engagement Board on the 24th. And that's a public meeting of the council chaired by the leader uh, of the council and, and that's where we discuss what's happening in COVID. So I will be presenting another formal report with updated numbers uh, next week, and you can watch it online through CMIS uh, and through the council website. The Department of Health will release any data on new cases of South African variant. So the bit that I'm not allowed to share is um, if we did have new cases, I wouldn't be able to tell you at this moment. And that's because the Secretary of State wants to make an announcement to the public when the data from all of the Operation Eagles comes together uh, and it's all been looked at. But because of what we've learned through all the, the uh, collaboration we've been doing over the last two weeks with you, the Council is looking to develop a team that we'll be able to do this again should we have to do it again. And I expect we will see more uh, incidents of new variants over the next year as the virus and the pandemic develop. So there's a lot of the things that you have taught us working with us over the last two weeks that are going to benefit the city as a whole. So I reiterate the words of Councillor Morrell and Councillor Hamilton to say thank you very much for what you've done. Um, over the last two weeks. I hope that it will really bring down the number of cases in the ward and we will see a real improvement over the next month um, protecting the citizens of Frankley and Northfield, uh, Rebri and Rednall through this extra testing. And I hope that at the end of this, we won't have found any more South African variant, but we will find that out probably in a week or two's time. Brilliant. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Varney, to yourself as well. Um, I, I, I say that every time, but I really do mean it. Uh, the, the work this guy has done is, uh, is, is, is incredible, and uh, I, I do think you need to be commended. I'm going to now open up to politicians first and then to members of the public. So if you've got questions, Please get them ready. Uh, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, don't leave the meeting later and think, I wish I'd asked that question. Uh, here's time to, to ask it. I'm going to start with Gary Sambrook, Member of Parliament, if you want to make some comments. Uh, thank you, Simon, and thank you, Justin, and thank you, Pauline, uh, Paulette, um, for this um, evening. It's really important um, that we communicate with everybody to make sure you know that all of your efforts um, have worked wonders with making sure that we have a high take up of the testing over the last um, couple of days. It's really appreciated. And I think the community has really done well in coming together to make sure uh, that they did what was asked of them. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I only really want to focus on uh, one thing, which is the vaccine, because it's really important because it's our way out of this pandemic uh, and it is our way back to normality as quickly as possible. And so if you do get the phone call or you get your letter uh, and or if you think at the moment that you are able and should be able to get your vaccine but haven't had your letter yet 
then please do call um, your uh, 119 or your local doctors to get your vaccine as quickly as possible. Uh, because we've seen today the, uh, the data on how the vaccines are going in our local communities. And although across Northfield we have some very good figures, um, some, some of the highest in the city of vaccine take up, there's always still more that can be done to make sure that people have their jab. So if you haven't had it, if, or if you know someone that hasn't had it, be please do encourage them um, to go and get their vaccine. And if they're worried or if they've got any questions, then please point them in our direction uh, to uh, the Birmingham City Council's website, uh, which has got some vaccine information, or to the government website too, just to reassure them and let them know uh, what the facts are really. So thank you very much, uh, everyone, for all of your work over the last couple of days. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gary. Uh, can I just ask uh, Karen Lung, can you turn your camera off, please? There we go. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, I'm now going to hand over to uh, Councillor Adrian Delaney. Uh, the councillor for Ruby and Rednall Ward, which mirrors my, my own. So, Adrian, if you want to say a few words. Hello, Simon. Thank you. Uh, just once again, thank you to Simon for chairing the meeting and for Paulette Hamilton and Justin Varney for taking part in all three meetings. Uh, the feedback that I've had from my residents and some of the businesses in the local area is they found them to be very informative and reassuring. Uh, the only other comment I'd make, the, the questions that I was going to ask have all been answered, uh, is on my rare trips out of the house to Morrison's or to my street or my evening walk, uh, I've just observed that people are observing social distancing, taking all the, the measures uh, really seriously, and I'd just like to thank them all for doing that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Delaney. Sticking with Rubri, uh, and on the other side of the border, I've noticed Councillor MacDonald is here uh, from Ruby North. Uh, from the, it's a different authority, uh, but uh, if Councillor MacDonald, if you have any questions for Dr Varney. Uh, no, not at all. I'm just thanking everybody for inviting me, and um, I'm quite pleased with the response uh, from the people, frankly. And uh, I'm very pleased you're having these meetings because they're a great interest to me being across the border there. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome, uh, Councillor MacDonald. So I'll now open up to uh, Councillor Debbie Clancy, uh, Councillor for Longridge and West Seaford. Thank you very much, Councillor Morrell. And um, just to echo, thank you to everybody that's been involved. It, it's, it's really impressive and uh, it just shows you how people can work together for the benefit of greater good. Um, I, I just wanted to hone in on one of the points that Justin made. Um, frankly, have really rose to the challenge uh, and other residents in Northfield. Uh, without a doubt, they've rose to the challenge. Um, Justin, you mentioned that um, 12,500 tests thereabout had been done and that over 50% of the population have been reached. Um, I'm not uh, complete, completely certain what the uh, population figures are for, frankly, and South Northfield. So, um, I was interested in the question that Robbie asked because I was going to ask something similar. Why stop testing, especially if we know how many people are testing and possibly there's more of the population that still need to test? So just to wrap that up and summarise, what will we do with the population figures that haven't tested? Will we wait till the results come through? and put another comms team back in to reach out to those population that we've possibly missed. Thank you. Brilliant. Dr Varney, over to you. Sure, thank you for the councillor question, Councillor Clancy. Um, so the I'm just trying to dig out the email which has got that number on it for you because um, my team did the maths to work out and this was actually up to the 13th of February. So the population of Frankly uh, is just over, just under 12,000 people in total. Uh, actually just, it's 11,800. Uh, and up to the 13th of February, there'd been six, just over 6,000 tests done for people that had a, a resident address in Frankly, which would put it about 
uh, of the population of Frankly had had a test by the 13th of February. And of course, that was five days before we finished testing. So I'm, I'm pretty confident to say more than a, more than half. And, and the other thing I should say is that 11,000 is all ages. So that includes children. And obviously we were testing adults. So I, I think that's a, a conservative estimate, if you'll forgive the phrase, uh, of um, how many of the proportion have been tested. So just picking up on Robbie's point about why we're not trying to test absolutely everyone. Um, and, and this is also why we didn't test children. So the South African variant is like the Kent variant in that it's very infectious. So if it's in the house, it's likely that multiple people have got it. It would be unusual, for example, for just the children to have caught it and the adults not to have got it. And what we have been doing is going back and just checking, did we miss any houses? And the doorstep team went back extra times over the last two days to try and mop up anyone that didn't hadn't taken a test yet um, to try and just close that gap. Um, but I'm comfortable at this point, and we had a lot of discussions with the Department of Health and Public Health England to decide whether we would stop or continue. And the reason we decided to stop was, one, because of the very, very good uptake. And, and actually, when we look at the map by postcode, we've got good uptake across the whole of the affected area, which is brilliant. But two, we are getting the positive results back within about 48 hours. So I can see for the vast majority of the tests that were done, whether people tested positive or not. And that rate of positive tests is not any higher than the rate for the rest of the city. And that suggests there isn't something different going on. Now, if we'd have seen a very different patch pattern in Frankly, I think we would have continued testing. But at the moment, the pattern we're seeing looks very similar to the rest of the city, which would suggest, I hope, that this isn't any different, that everyone has Kent variant or old COVID in Frankly, because if it was the new variant, I would expect to see a slightly different pattern. And that's why we took the decision to stop when we have. If we find over the next three to four days, or over, sorry, over the next 10 days, that there are lots of cases of South African variant in Frankly and in Warsaw, and in Warwickshire where they're doing it as well. I think there will have to be a very different strategy nationally, but I would be very surprised if Birmingham happens to be the one place that South African variant has taken off and it's not everywhere else. The final thing I would say, and this is where we don't know yet the science, but we think that the Kent variant when it's fighting the South African variant, wins. So in countries where the Kent variant is becoming the main type of virus, the South African variant doesn't seem to be able to get a foothold. But in countries like South Africa, where it started, it takes over really quickly. So it may be that that's what's limited the spread as well. But it's because we didn't see a different pattern and we are not seeing more positives than I would expect, we think this is a reasonable point at which to stop testing. Of course, people can still access lateral flow testing, which will help detect any more positive cases if they don't have symptoms. And we are looking now also, at can we use some of the sites that we used during Operation Eagle to bring more lateral flow testing to this end of the city? because it is a bit underserved and I want to improve that over the next couple of weeks. Fantastic. Does that answer your questions, Councillor Clancy? Thank you very much, yes, thank you. Brilliant. Right, I'm going to bring one more councillor in before opening up to members of the public. Um, I should have said this, um, if you want to ask a question, you'll see a hand icon. If you push the hand icon, it will show me that you want to ask a question. Alternatively, you can type your question into the chat. Um, so please do that while I bring in the next councillor, which is Councillor Eddie Freeman from Allen's Cross Ward. 
Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Justin. Uh, and thank everybody who's, uh, who's took the test. I was one of them myself who took the test because uh, we're working on the buses in the area. And I've also had my jab, so I advise everybody to take their jab. And well done, uh, frankly, and North uh, for uh, supporting the test centre. And I hope everybody will continue and be safe. Thank you very much, Simon. That's because some of the questions were answered. So thank you very much, Simon. Brilliant, fantastic. I've noticed we've got some members of the media here. Um, Sass Taylor, B31 Voices. Do you have any questions? And we also have Tristian Harris from the Bromsgrove Standard. Tristian, do you have any questions you would like to ask? Silence is golden. Do any members of the public have any questions that you would like to ask? Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to start picking on people. For some in the comment section, Simon. Let's have a look. I'm not seeing them. Meeting chat is muted. For some reason, I'm not seeing the uh, comments. Josh, would you be able to look at those? Uh, Justin's just answered one, but we've got another one from Rich. Is is your messaging still not to leave the area I work in Wolverhampton? That's a good question. So, Rich, you, you're fine to go to work in Wolverhampton. Um, and I'm sorry that message wasn't clear enough before. We at no point said you couldn't go to work. We were asking people to test, um, but it shouldn't. you didn't need to wait for your result before you went to work. So you are fine to go to work, uh, assuming that is essential work that cannot be done from home. And I hope your employer in Wolverhampton is also setting up to give you lateral flow testing because after the next week or two, you should start regular lateral flow testing uh, as normal as well. So um, now we've done Operation Eagle, nothing changes in terms of testing, nothing changes in terms of hand face space, um, but I'm hoping that we will see case rates in the area coming down because we've done such a good job at finding cases that are there. OK, great. Um, I just sent a message in the chat saying test. Uh, that wasn't me telling you to get a test. Uh, that was me just seeing if, if my communications are working because I haven't had anything come through my end. Uh, uh, we've, uh, there's one from James Clark saying, can bus and coach drivers be vaccinated? Yeah. So pick that up, Councillor. So we're vaccinating people because of their risk of dying or ending up in hospital if they catch the coronavirus and that's what the nine priority groups are so in while we still have a small amount of vaccine we have to give it to the people that are most likely to die if they catch covid when we vaccinated all nine priority groups we should then be able to extend that vaccine to other groups. And the government at the moment is making the decision about how to prioritise and whether that will be on age again or on occupational exposure or some other factor. But at the moment, we're still working through the nine priority groups. And it's really important because from the first injection, that risk of dying or ending up in hospital massively reduces, but you need the second injection to really prevent catching the virus, but the first really reduces your chance of dying. Uh, we've got another question. Do we know the percentage of residents vaccinated in Frankly? We do. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gary, did you want to pick up that one? Because yeah, you probably got it to hand. I, I have. I got it to hand just in fact. So in Frankly Great Park, the number of people over the age of 80 who have been vaccinated is 
89 percent uh the age group 75 to 79 is 93 percent the age group 70 to 79 is 88.6 percent and those who are clinically extremely vulnerable is 65.1 percent when will uh, we be getting jabs if we're classed as key workers no but no worse been seen on the list i think yeah so key workers are not included in the prioritization just because you're key workers so policemen firemen uh, bin men teachers are not prioritized because there is no evidence that they are increased risk of dying because of the coronavirus. Social care staff and NHS staff were included in priority group two, I think it was. Um, and that's because they work in very close contact with people who are extremely vulnerable, like the most elderly. And therefore the risk is that they could give it to them. So that's the one situation where we've given it to stop transmission is for people working directly with those most vulnerable groups and on the front line of our NHS. But it doesn't apply to all key workers. And I'll put in the chat the link on who's eligible under which priority groups. Simon, can you see hands? Yes, I can. I can see uh, two hands. I'm going to start with Rich. Rich, if you want to ask your question, please. Uh, Rich, you might need to unmute. OK, I'll go for David then. David, you've got your hand up as well. If you want to ask your question, please. Within our communities, and tragically, nope. people are still dying. The danger has nope. not yet gone away. People are still grieving. Nope. Families are still living in fear. Right, I will go to. Uh, we'll hand back to Josh then. If there's any more questions in the chat. Uh, we've got Anne. I live close to Tessel Lane, and the area of concern is it okay to volunteer in Northfield Food Service? Yes, and absolutely. Uh, and I'm sure from having met some of Northfield Food Service uh, last week, they are taking COVID safety really seriously. Um, now that we've done the testing, people shouldn't be isolating at home unless they're a contact of a case and they've been told to by NHS Test and Trace or because they're a case themselves. So, yes, you should be continuing with volunteering and essential work as well. OK, I've just seen David's camera come on. David, did you want to ask a question? Try again. No, I'll hand back to Josh. If there's any more questions in the chat. Uh, I think we've covered all the ones in the chat. OK, great. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand that. For some reason, my chat, it's uh, it's empty. Nothing's coming up. So uh, apologies for those technical errors. Thank you, Josh. Um, again, if anybody else has a question, this is your opportunity. I'm going to go back to David again, just because his hand is still up. No. Uh, in that case, I will. I think we should probably bring the meeting to a close. Then, uh, if there's any, does anybody want to make any closing remarks? If I, Gary Sandbrook, if I hand back over to you. Uh, thanks, Simon. I've got no real closing remarks. Just saying thank you to people for turning up tonight. It's much appreciated. Uh, and as we said, with the vaccine, please do spread uh, the word and encourage your family and friends uh, and loved ones to get the vaccine uh, when they're asked to do so. Thanks, everybody. Brilliant. Fantastic. And Dr Varney, have you got any final remarks to make? Thank you, Councillor. I'll just pick up the quick question from Charlotte in the chat about the shielding list um, because I think it's an important one. So uh, over the weekend the NHS 
did further work to look at people who might be uh, who are now considered clinically extremely vulnerable. And what that involved is looking not just if someone had a disease like hypertension, but also their age, their ethnicity, if they lived in an area of deprivation. And it took all of that and created a COVID risk score. And if people were above a certain risk, they were sent a letter by the NHS saying they now need to join the shielding list and they are eligible for a vaccine. So it's extra work the NHS has done based on the learning from the last year to give more protection to a larger group of people. So that's why people will have had a letter potentially this week to ask them to shield. Finally, I just say thank you to everyone. We can't do it without citizens actually opening the front door and going to get a test. And it's because you have done so much in your communities to share the information, to encourage people to take the test. I am so impressed. I was expecting 30% uptake, to be honest. That would have made me quite happy. So over 50% is phenomenal. And actually it sets a bar for whichever area of the city this is affected by this next. So thank you very much uh, for all the hard work that you've done. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, I'm just to close and, and to echo that as well. I, I was quite worried actually when this when this news broke because um, I, I, I joked, didn't I, that I wanted to put frankly on the map. I didn't expect to be doing it like this. But as Dr Varney has just said, um, we have just set a benchmark for other regions to follow. And I can't tell you how incredibly proud I am uh, of everybody for, for, for stepping up to the plate and, and getting this done. Um, so uh, tomorrow it's my birthday. Uh, so uh, I'm quite happy to, uh, to, 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 to spend this weekend, um, uh, 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 you know, celebrating uh, the victory that we, we've had here in Frankly. And um, my, I, it's, it's, funny, it's a funny date because my, my, my birthday is at the end of Aquarius. And Aquarius is is often seen as a sign of renewal. And uh, I, I just want to say to people that I, I've been saying it all year that I do think that on the back end of this crisis that we are going to bounce back. Um, I do strongly feel that this year is going to be uh, it's going to be a positive one. Uh, England are going to bring back the Euro Cup. And, uh, and, and I think that better days are going to be ahead. And as a mental health campaigner, I also want to uh, plead to the uh, to the community to reach out to people, uh, pick up the phone, speak to your friends, speak to your, your family and, uh, and and just check up to see if people are, are OK. Uh, and when we finally go back uh, to be able to meet people again, uh, I, I've certainly missed not being able to go out and see people in the community. Um, uh, it, it's, I've, again, we've got lots more to, to look forward to. So. Thanks again, everybody, and uh, enjoy your weekend. Please stay safe. Please follow the rules and uh, and take care of, uh, of each other and uh, and have a very, very pleasant evening. Take care. Simon, take care and happy birthday Thank for tomorrow. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Thank you Kelly. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Gary.